guys hello and welcome and look at this crazy thing that I made now this took me quite a bit of work and this is Tetengin portal diorama with a Kajiro Fox owl got loads of resin epoxy lots of painting and lots of electronics there's a lot of shit here going on and yeah this took me around a month uh, in total but this is just an incredible piece look at this So yeah, as you can see, this piece is pretty huge. This is printed at 100% scale, and this is originally modeled by the Black Forge Games. And it's an incredible company that's doing a lot of amazing models for 3D printing. Now, this was printed with resin printers, as you can see, because I don't think FDM printers can print that cleanly. But there's a lot of post-processing that is involved in this, in terms of uh, cleaning, or removing supports, uh, painting, processing, gluing. Uh, sanding, pouring epoxy resin, and then if you want to do electronics as well, it, there's got to be quite a bit going on here at the bottom as you can see. Now the electronics was pre-planned by Black Forge Games, so they did incorporate that like where the portal is, where this first symbol is. However, I don't think it was incorporated in the base here like I incorporated in here. There's quite a few things that I improvised myself, like removing this fox, so you can actually remove it and reinsert it for viewing. Same goes for the tension himself. You can actually remove him and put him back in. And as you remove him, the lights will go out. So you can see, lights go off, and then lights go back on as you reinsert him. And that is some things that I improvised myself. You can see I inserted some pins at the bottom. I'm not sure if the camera will focus, but we'll get onto that in the in-depth episodes. But I thought I would introduce you guys to this project with me holding it in person just so you can see this, because it is pretty huge. To be honest, I wouldn't mind printing it even larger just for the sheer awesomeness of it, but at the moment it's pretty big as it is and it was quite a big undertaking because it did involve me learning a lot of new techniques to actually make this thing come true. So let's get right into it. So we have the prints printed already and let's get this off the actual plate. So I got the wham bam plates so they flex really easily and I can just uh, remove the prints from the supports like that so that I don't actually have to use the scraper for the removal process. It's a bit more easy if I just flex the plate. So I like to remove my supports before I dip the whole object into the IPA and that works pretty well for me. And then I could use my gloves, which you, which you can see they're rather thick. I don't use the latex gloves anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if the material is latex, but it's much thicker. So I just re constantly reuse these gloves, which is very good for um, support removal and cleaning up the prints. But yeah, I have to use the pliers sometimes because uh, they just attach into areas that sometimes the gloves can't get into. But that makes the process pretty easy and straightforward for me. And I got into the habit of using um, this little what would you call it plate plastic uh, tray yeah plastic tray and that makes things a bit more uh, contained so that the resin just doesn't go everywhere and I used to have kitchen towels as you can see in this video but now I have uh, a plastic sheet undone just to make sure that the resin doesn't get on my floor because as you can see the floor is rather new uh, I installed it I would say like half a year so it's not new anymore ish but I mean, I had the old floor for like 15 years, so it's quite nice that I have a uh, new flooring, so I want to maintain it. So yeah, a uh, plastic cover for the resin, so it doesn't drip onto the floor. But yeah, look how beautiful these prints are. It's just incredible. And then there's so little processing work that has to be done. Like, I, I don't think I needed to sand any of the pieces besides when I was super gluing things together. Um, like the bottom sigil where the tension actually stands on. I think only that I had to sand because instead of um, clear I printed it in black and I needed to sand that down so that the LED lights could actually shine through it because uh, when I printed it in black obviously it couldn't uh, shine through that because it was like rather thick so I ended up having to sand that which is what I'm holding right now actually that's what I had to sand through but you'll see me get into that a bit later let's continue with the next plate because there was a lot of plates that we had to remove clean get rid of supports, bend the supports, etc. But yeah, this whole episode is all about that. Just uh, getting all the prints cleaned up and ready for assembly because that's what we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to assemble everything together, which is one of the criticisms I have in a way of the Black Forge games, in a way. I mean, it's barely a criticism, but when we were working with like 100 pieces that were printed, I did not know where to start. I didn't know what goes where. So that was a bit of a puzzle figuring out where of what goes where. 
But I got there in the end, and um, God, it just looked incredible. You'll see, guys. We're going to get into that in the next episode. And the next episode is going to be quite long, but very interesting. So do make sure you subscribe to the... To do make sure to subscribe if you want to see the whole assembly process, which I don't think you can find anywhere else. I didn't, I didn't see anyone else upload the video, and so I had to figure everything out myself. But yeah, that's just me talking non-stop, rambling on. Look at this next plate. Like sometimes I just lo love doing these little videos of uh, the whole print just hanging above the print bed, on the print bed above the resin. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna have a little show off of a different angle. See if you can guys can see just how beautiful the roof is. You know what? I really want to print this roof in like one-to-one -one scale and put it up in front of my door. How insane would that be? But removing all these supports is just so satisfying. And they leave like no marks that I can see. And if they do, um, they'll be hidden away when they are glued together. So that is just incredible that um, they can be covered so easily. I love that about the, these models. Like, uh, all, I do sometimes design my own things, but um, I'm nowhere near as optimized on the support side. So, actually, there was a few uh, prints that I had to reprint a few times because uh, uh, they detached from the print bed. Um, not. I think only maybe two or three. I'm not sure if it was uh, on their guy on Black Forge's. Uh, fault or mine probably was, was mine um i feel like some some of the models maybe one or two they need a few extra supports i know they these guys they seem to optimize for minimal support usage but some some of these pieces uh needed a few more extras just to make sure they don't detach and stay on an fep sheet which some of them did but only like two i'm just being super critical because i'm trying to fill in the void instead of me just being silent <laughs> But yeah, there's going to be a lot of speed ramps here for these videos because actually, god, the amount of footage that I've recorded is around one terabyte of this whole project. And to be honest, I just want to rush through it because I want to move to other projects because I have infinite projects to work on. So you're having a lot of uh, sped up footage here of just me accelerating through these support removals. But I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to see everything that's involved, even if it's sped up. But we're getting to the end of this episode and guys subscribe like and leave me a comment of what you think of this process if you gonna print this yourself do you have a resin printer fdm could you try it on the fdm printer subscribe guys and you're gonna see uh, the next video of me assembling the whole thing take care guys peace